everybody, welcome back to the Evermore YouTube channel. It's Chris back with another rumour has it video where we're talking about players linked to the club this summer. Boy, things are heating up just like the weather in sunny old Newcastle. We're getting loads of players linked to us. Italian stallions left, right and centre. One looks like it's almost done. And we're going to talk about another one here that could very well come into St James's Park as well and add a little bit of that, you know, Italian spice to the Eddie Howe's menu. What a fantastic side of this kid will be if we get it. Then we're going to get stuck right into this in a minute. Just before we do, a little reminder, if you haven't already, click subscribe. I'd love you to come and join us. We're on 3,886, I think now, after the Jamie Carragher rant video. So thank you so much to everybody who smashed a like on that and subscribed as well. Great to have you on board. We're trying to get to 4K for the start of the season. Help us get there. Hopefully we'll, we'll be there before we kick off against Aston Villa. What a place it will be as well. We'll have another giveaway for 4K. So hit that button. You could be one of the lucky winners that wins the 4K giveaway. So any minute, let's stop waffling about 4K. Let's talk about transfers. Now, there's been a position that we've been dying to fill. Now, it looks like we're going to fill the number six role um, in terms of uh, Tonali, which we'll, we'll come on to him in a little bit. But the left-back role is still a role that's massively needed in terms of uh, additional Probably cover stroke starting left back in terms of offers you a bit more of an attacking quality than Dan Byrne. Dan Byrne is class, he should blithe, we love him and everything else. But in terms of attacking going forward, he's not particularly great at it. So, we have been looking at some more attack minded left backs. The name of Kieran Tierney has been all over the club's radar this summer. I think the injury concerns for Tierney and his ability to play a long season is possibly a worry. So, because of that, another name has come to the fold. And it is this lad right here who is uh, Federico De Marco, who plays for Inter Milan, uh, played in the final as well. Uh, he's uh, been a fantastic servant for Inter Milan since he's been there. Um, and certainly this season in, the, in the, the run to the kind of Champions League final as well. Uh, in terms of what he brings, we'll look at the stats individually in a minute. But what he does bring, he brings pace, he brings energy. Um, he's got great recovery um, qualities, great interceptions, good positional sense. And he's been described as world-class in terms of his, uh, his set-piece taken and his ability to cross a ball. Very much what Trippier does for us on the right-hand side, this lad should be able to do on the left-hand side. So it could be a really exciting sign as well. And the story goes that we are looking at him, I think it's a 30 million quid um, transfer fee on his head at Inter Milan. He's got three years left to go on his contract, so they don't have to sell and they could squeeze us for everything they want. But the Newcastle entourage is over in Romania right now and uh, trying to tie up the Tonali deal, but apparently they have been over in Italy as well, possibly talking to DeMarco as well to get that one tied up. So Raiden Serie A by the looks of it, so a uh, very good move because there is some very good players there, especially defenders. Always been good defenders that played in Serie A for years. It's always been a great hunting ground to get centre-halves from and left-backs and right-backs and everything else. So it's no surprise we're raiding that then. It's obviously Dan Ashworth at work as well in terms of his, his scouting network. But let's look at the individual stats then from... Uh, Frederico versus Dan Burns. So we'll call him Big Fred. Big Fred, but little Fred versus Big Dan. You can see it's almost a battle of a knee slide there, Mark's done. I wonder who'd win that one, given Dan Burns' legs are nearly as big as DeMarco, probably Dan Burns. But so 25 years old for uh, little Fred and 31 for Big Dan Byrne. Um, in terms of the competitions, in terms of games played, 50 appearances for DeMarco uh, this season, which is brilliant consistency and durability through a season. 44 for Big Dan Byrne as well. So it's amazing when you see him, he takes his top off and he's held together with tape and he's Big Dan Byrne, but he's, uh, he is class. We'll look at this. Six goals for DeMarco and two goals for Byrne. Uh, eight assists and zero assists for Dan Byrne. That's a big thing in terms of adding that attack and threat to the left-back spot. Tackles per game, so DeMarco puts in less tackles than Big Dan Byrne. Interceptions are kind of there, thereabouts, 0.90 for DeMarco, 0.93 for Byrne. Blocks, 0.80 for DeMarco, 1.22 for Byrne. Clearances, way more clearances for Big Dan Byrne. He is a centre-half by trade, so I think he does naturally have more defensive qualities. Um, fouls, DeMarco gives away less fouls than Big Dan Byrne, which isn't surprising because he's got a bit more pace about him. Recoveries, uh, you can see DeMarco's at 5.44, so he's ahead of Byrne in that regard. Passing completion, interestingly enough, Dan Byrne is ahead of DeMarco at 79%. Uh, versus his 72, which is very interesting. I mean, you could say that DeMarco maybe tries a bit more ambitious passes, which maybe don't quite find the man. So arguably that's why his stats have dropped a little bit. But the crosses, look at the crosses. 8.69 crosses per 90 minutes from DeMarco versus 0.49 for Byrne. That's the key stat right there. You're talking about two different left-backs here. One who's very defensive-minded, another one who can get forward and make something happen. Could you imagine eight and a half crosses from DeMarco going in at the left-hand side 
possibly the same amount from Trippier going at the right hand side with someone like Alexander Rizak or Callum Wilson in the middle. That is going to get goals put in the back of the net. 100%. Shot creation chances again 4.25 for DeMarco, way ahead of Burn at 116. Goal creation chances 0.48 for DeMarco and 0.09 for Burn. Obviously, the, the XA, the um, expected assist is much higher for DeMarco than, than, than Burn, as is the actual assist themselves. But if we look at the, the, the kind of individual stats, the old red, amber, greens that we do, which I know you guys like to look at, and yours mentioned in the comments as well. So look at DeMarco straight away. Let's get to the reds. I mean, the tackles there. You know, flash up is, is a low percentile, a 13 percentile across the top five European leagues for left backs. Now, he's very much an attacking left back. I think he's very much a positional sense left back. So his traditional tackles that he goes in for possibly doesn't do as much as other people, certainly not as big Dan burn. Tackles one, he's at 33 percentile. Tackles in the defensive third, not a great deal, but tackles in the middle third is up in the 70th percentile, as you can see there. And interceptions, he's in 39th percentile. Passes at 55, long pass completions at 96. He certainly can spray a ball around, there's no doubt about that. Progressive passes is 56%, but key passes is up at 98%. Passes in the final third at 49. But look at the rest of the greens. Let's focus on the greens. I always like to try and be positive with these things. So it's crossing percentile is 98 percentile from left backs across the top five European leagues. That's including likes of Andy Robertson as well. So you can see how high he is. In that regard, crosses in the area, 98%. Our shot creation chances, 98 Goal creation chances, 96 Touches in the final third, 89 percentile. You can pay wing-back or a traditional left-back. Maybe he's more suited to a wing-back position. Well, I mean, the change of shape, bringing him in, not, I don't know. But you could possibly just have him and Trippier pushed up a little bit further forward and Botman and Shaw or Botman and another dropping back as, as those centre-halves and just move fluidly, moving the attack as a four-piece drop back as a two-piece and have the other lads bombing up and down the wings, whipping in crosses, etc., etc. But that's really how the managerial genius to figure out, not me. Um, but looking at everything else there, you know, fouls obviously is in the 80th percentile, so he doesn't give a great deal of fouls away, and recovery is 45th percentile. So this is very interesting because we're going after some players who play for big teams here and just played in Champions League semi-finals in Tonali's case and finals in DeMarco's case. So this is, this is really, really good to see. Um, incredible, actually. So... You know, this would be a really good sign, in my opinion. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Would you rather have a Kieran Tierney, someone who's got Premier League experience, or would you be buzzing to uh, to get DeMarco over the line because he is a proven player uh, with pedigree? You know, he'd been capped multiple times by Italy as well. So, yeah, this dad could be a real good sign as well. But let us know in the comments below. We always like to hear from you. As I mentioned at the start, if you haven't already, click subscribe. We'd love you to come and join us. Help get us to 4K for the start of the season. Like the video. Get it on YouTube. Help the channel grow. We're going to be back with more transfer banter soon. Soon enough, we'll have a sign seal delivered video for Tenali. What a sign that's going to be. I can just see the salt pouring from the salty, greedy six fans. Bring it on. I love salt on my dinner. Catch you later, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.